he did not uh, leave any genre untouched. He was so versatile in his writing. So I admire him very much. As you know, Dryden inaugurated the neoclassical period. He was actually a restoration writer, but he inaugurated the neoclassical period in the 17th century itself. Later, uh, Alexander Pope in poetry, uh, Jonathan Swift and uh, others, Dr. Johnson, etc. in satire and prose carried the neoclassical period forward. So let us take a quick look at Dryden's uh, works. This is John Dryden, by the way. He was born in Northamptonshire and he was an aristocrat and a very influential Tory or conservative politician. Dryden's early poetry, I hope uh, you can see it, the writing is a little too small. The career of Dryden began with some poetry. As soon as Oliver Cromwell died, he wrote heroic stanzas. Heroic stanzas on the death of Oliver Cromwell. And then Astria Redux, then Annus Mirabilis. Let me quickly tell you about these works a little bit. Heroic stanzas on the death of Oliver Cromwell obviously supported Oliver Cromwell, but very cautiously. He did not mention Cromwell's religion and controversial aspects of Cromwell's rule at all. This came immediately after Cromwell's death. That was in 1658 that Cromwell died. And, uh, and uh, heroic stanzas came in 1659, immediately after Cromwell's death. After that, what happened? 1660, restoration of monarchy happened. At this time, Dryden immediately changed over. He was known as an opportunist. He completely changed from Cromwell's side to the side of the monarchy. And he praised Charles II's restoration to the throne uh, in 1660 upon restoration. That is in the second work, Astria Redux. So first, uh, heroic stanzas on the death of Oliver Cromwell. That was 1659. Immediately afterwards, he wrote about the other side. That is about restoration, Astria Redux. Astria Redux, the title in Latin means justice restored. See, he was first praising Cromwell and now he is saying justice is restored with the reign of Charles II. Hey, do not judge Dryden because Dr. Johnson said if Dryden changed, he changed with the nation. So, not only Dryden, but the nation also changed. Now, let me tell you about the third important work. 1666 was a very uh, problematic year because 666 is the year of the devil. And people thought the world is going to end. But the world did not end. Just the great fire of London happened. 13,000 buildings burnt. And there was a big calamity, another calamity. The plague came. There was a war with the Dutch. Lots of people died. But Dryden calls the year 666 Annus Mirabilis or wonderful year. Because more calamities did not happen. He's praising God for it. So the third important poetry, poem that Dryden wrote in his early career is Annus Mirabilis. That was published in the year 1667. So once more, uh, Dryden began his career with heroic stanzas on the death of Oliver Cromwell, 1659. Then Astria Redux, 1660, about restoration. And then in 1667, he wrote um, Annus Mirabilis. At this time in 1667, he had already started writing uh, drama, heroic drama. That is the dra drama that Dryden wrote. And around this time in 1668, he also became the poet laureate. Now let us take a quick look at the other works. Heroic drama can be tragedy or comedy. It started with the wild gallant. The most famous earliest heroic drama that he wrote was the Indian emperor. Hello, this is not about any Indian emperor. It is about a Mexican emperor, red Indian emperor. And the third one was the conquest of Granada. Not third, the, the main third one, the uh, ma major heroic drama that he wrote after Indian emperor was the conquest of Granada. In the introduction to Conquest of Granada, uh, he writes about the genre of heroic tragedy. The introduction to the Conquest of Granada is called the Essay on Heroic Tragedy. And uh, there were many other heroic plays that he wrote, all written in heroic couplet, all written in a bombastic, pompous language about aristocrats and uh, about their dilemma between love and valor. Love, valor, love, valor, love, valor. They are torn, the protagonists of the heroic tragedies are torn between these two themes of love and valor. So that is Dryden's heroic drama. Hey, people enjoyed heroic drama at first, but then there was a famous play, the rehearsal that came 
probably written by um, the Duke of Buckingham, George Villiers and others. And at this time, they made fun of Dryden. The rehearsal made fun of Dryden for writing heroic drama. Then uh, Dryden at this time uh, left heroic drama and heroic couplet and turned to blank verse. As you know, he was always changing. He first supported heroic couplet and then he changed over to blank verse. And uh, then he wrote his masterpiece, All for Love. All for Love or The World Well Lost, a play based on Shakespeare's Antony and Cleopatra. Uh, that was his masterpiece. Uh, it came sometime in the late 1670s, I think. Just look it up. And then uh, at this time, as I told you, he was already poet laureate and he was a Tory. That also I told you. As a Tory, he supported the royalists or the people uh, supporting Charles, the king. And he got involved in what is called exclusion crisis. About exclusion crisis, he wrote three satires, Absalom and Echidophil, The Medal and Mac Fleckno. These are the three original satires by Dryden. I will tell you briefly what is exclusion crisis. I'm going a little too fast for two reasons. One, I have to go to class. Secondly, uh, everything I need not tell you. I am just telling you how to study, how to think about uh, an author, how to collect information chronologically, how to uh, understand the text in, the, in terms of the social context. Learning is something you should do. Nobody can teach you. I can only show you the way. I can show you how to study. And you should study in this manner and revise it so that you'll never forget. Coming to exclusion crisis. Charles II was a merry monarch. He loved women and drinking and pleasure. And he did not have legitimate heirs. His, his wife had many miscarriages. And his, the apparent heir, his only apparent heir was his brother, James. Now, at this time, England is divided into two, the Whigs and the Tories. These are the Whigs, these are the Tories. These are the Liberals, these are the Conservatives. The Whigs did not support the brother Charles because the Whigs understood that Charles, the brother, uh, sorry, uh, James, the brother of Charles is a Catholic. The Whigs did not support the brother of Charles. They supported the eldest illegitimate son of Charles, James Scott, Duke of Monmouth. The Whigs are saying... James, the brother of Charles, should not come to power. The son of Charles, illegitimate, uh, James Scott, Duke of Monmouth, should come to power. The Whigs under Shaftesbury are supporting Monmouth, while the Tories, the Tories are the royalists. They said, we will not support any illegitimate sons. We support only royal blood. The Tories, who are conservatives and aristocrats, they supported James, the brother of Charles. The Whigs supported Mo Monmouth. The Tories supported James, the brother of Charles. The Whigs and the Tories are fighting. And Dryden is on the Tory side. Is that clear? Dryden is on the Tory side. He wrote Absalom and Achitophel against the leader of the Whigs, Shaftesbury. And then Shaftesbury was arrested. Shaftesbury was put in prison. And when he was released, all the Whigs, the, the supporters of Shaftesbury, the Whigs, wore a medal, a medal uh, commemorating the release of Shaftesbury. Against that, Dryden wrote, from the Tory side, Dryden wrote the medal, attacking Shaftesbury again. So, first satire he wrote is Absalom and Achitophel, then he wrote the medal. Both are against Shaftesbury. Shaftesbury's follower and friend, Shadwell, did not keep quiet. From the Whig side, Shadwell wrote the medal of John Bayes, attacking Dryden. Bayes means poet laureate. Bayes was the protagonist of the rehearsal, which attacked Dryden. Shadwell wrote the medal of John Bayes. Hey, if I'm going too fast and you're not following, listen to the video again and again. Make your own notes. Study your notes. Research. Read more. At least a little bit of all these texts you should read. Okay? Okay. So, Dryden from the Tory side wrote Absalom and Achitophel and the medal against Shaftesbury. Then Shadwell wrote the medal of John Bayes attacking Dryden. Dryden did not keep quiet. Dryden wrote Mac Flecknoe attacking Shaftesbury and Shadwell. No, Shadwell, Shadwell, Shadwell. Uh, Mac Flecknoe was attacking Shadwell, not Shaftesbury. The three major satires of Dryden. Once more, the three major satires of Dryden are Absalom and Achitophel. It is based on the Old Testament story of Absalom with the help of Achitophel fighting against his own father, David. Absalom, here is Monmouth. Achitophel is Shaftesbury. 
Monmouth, with the help of Shaftesbury, is fighting King David, who is Charles. So, Absalom and Achitophel, the medal, a satire against a sedition, that is a subtitle. And then he wrote, Mac Fleckno, a satire upon the true blue Protestant poet T.S. The su subtitle of Mac Fleckno is, a satire upon the true blue Protestant poet T.S. Absalom and Achitophel was written in 1681. The very next year in 1682, Dryden wrote, The Medal and Mac Fleckno. In the same year, 1682, Dryden wrote Religio Leici. I have not given that in the uh, slides. In the year 1682, Dryden wrote Religio Leici. At that time, Dryden was an Anglican and he wrote Religio Leici supporting Anglicanism. Are you following? Now, the Tories are supporting James, the brother of Charles. James came to power because the exclusion bill tabled by the Whigs lost in the House of Lords. The exclusion bill did not get passed. So the Tories and James II, brother of Charles II, won. James II came to power. James II was a Catholic. And Dryden immediately, when did he come to power? 1685. Dryden immediately converted to Catholicism to please James and to support James. Dryden converted to Catholicism in 1686. 1685. James II came to power, 1686, Dryden converted to Catholicism. Immediately after that, he wrote a book and religious allegory supporting Catholicism. Let me recap. 1682, he wrote supporting Anglicanism, religio leci. Now in 1686, 1686, he converted to Catholicism. 1687, he wrote The Hind and the Panther supporting Catholicism. First he supported Anglicanism, then he supported Catholicism. Opportunist. But if he changed, he changed with the nation. So, 1687, he wrote The Hind and the Panda supporting Catholicism. You won't believe what happened in 1688. James lost his power. In the Glorious Revolution, James was ousted from power. His own daughter Mary and her Protestant husband William of Orange came to power. Dryden lost his offices. Dryden lost his poet laureate ship. Dryden lost his historiographer royal ship. The worst is he lost his poet laureate ship and Shadwell, his arch enemy, became the poet laureate. Oh my God. The worst happens to Dryden. At this time, Dryden was already writing critical prose. His epilogues and prologues that he wrote for his own works are important critical documents. Essay on satire, essay on heroic tragedy, etc. are there. But the most important are Dryden's of dramatic poesy, written in 1668, the year in which he became poet laureate. Of dramatic poesy and the last critical work came after the glorious revolution, at which time he lost all his offices. Then he wrote only translations. At that time he wrote translations of uh, Homer, Oh, Virgil, then uh, Chaucer, Ovid. These translations were called Fables, Ancient and Modern. It had a preface, preface to the fables. That is also another critical work. I am sure you are sufficiently confused. Let us take a look at the slides. Dryden wrote critical prose. Of dramatic poesy came in 1668. At this time, uh, the exclusion crisis started and Dryden uh, took part in the exclusion crisis, wrote the satires. After that, James II came to power. James II lost power. And Dryden also lost his offices. After that, he wrote only translations. Translations. One book, Fables, Ancient and Modern, published in 1700, was his last book. That book had a preface, preface to the fables. Preface to the fables is also a critical work. I just rushed through all these works. It will take days to teach Dryden, actually. You have to go over the chronology, the social events behind the text. You have to talk about the, how the texts were written. You have to look at the text and read the text, at least excerpts, at least opening and closing, if not the entire text. And to study literature, it takes time. You have to do your own research, slowly, slowly understand deeply these 
critical uh, sorry, uh, socio cultural background, then the text themselves, then the critical appreciation of the text. You have to even memorize lines. You have to live literature. You have to experience literature. It takes time. This video is only a very basic general introduction. It does not give you everything that you need. Okay? So please watch this video again, make the most of it, and start your preparation of Dryden's works. Thank you very much.